Hello fellow hunters and welcome to today's video. Finally the time has come, my first video about Way of the Hunter. And also another premiere, the first double feature on my channel. We start with my first steps in Way of the Hunter, in the second part I talk about some achievements in Huntsman 2 and we make a trip to the shooting range. But first a quick explanation, this is not a review of Way of the Hunter and I'll try to avoid comparing the games. Both are good in their own way but follow different approaches. I started Way of the Hunter with almost no information. At release I watched two reviews and decided to let the game age for a while. I only heard in between the devs fixed most of the problems quickly, but otherwise I don't know much about the gameplay and the mechanics. So the format of the videos will be slightly different from Huntsman 2. I don't have the necessary knowledge yet to create any guides or helpful content for the new game. Instead I take you on my journey through Way of the Hunter and you can follow my progress. I will analyze what I see and decide for myself what might be a good idea. So if I'm doing something completely wrong then tell me in the comments, I appreciate every tip and feedback because I'm a bloody noob in Way of the Hunter. Today's video is for the most part about equipment, theory and basic game mechanics, so it might be a bit boring for some viewers. The following videos will contain more gameplay and should be more entertaining. And the new Alaska DLC is something I won't talk about yet. I'm still at the beginning of the base game, so I'll check the new region a bit later. So let's get started. I left the difficulty level at default setting Adventurer. Progress should be slow enough without making it unnecessarily harder than it already is. After I completed the first quests and earned some credits, I needed to decide which equipment I should buy first. The starting rifle wasn't bad at all, so I bought a new scope first. It was by far the weakest part of the starting equipment in my opinion. This Leopold scope is very expensive, but it has a much better lens quality and zoom. It makes accurate shots a lot easier. To get a bit more power and range for the shots, my next purchase was a 300 Win Mag. Right now I hunt mostly for deer, they go down fast and a larger caliber increases efficiency. This rifle should last for a while, even if prey gets bigger. Better binoculars also seemed like a good idea and should bring benefits no matter what species I'm hunting for. Now it was about the callers and which of them could be useful for the beginning. I had quests for deer and badgers and I saw some elk in the starting area. So this combination should do the job for now. But when I tried the callers I was surprised that only one of the modes was available and I couldn't adjust anything. When checking the encyclopedia things were clear, I need to unlock perks first to fully use them. The first two strategic perks are required to use all caller levels. So that means luring and harvesting 10 female deer, then I can lure bucks and unlock the second perk. That was a bit disappointing. If you watched my previous videos, you know that I'm not a huge fan of RPG elements in hunting games. That was one of the main reasons why I abandoned Call of the Wild. I just don't like being forced to level up stats to fully use basic equipment. Fortunately, it requires not too much ground. I already explored a small part of the map and made a plan for the next steps. I will travel between the camps and try to unlock the first perk as fast as possible. When I can finally lure bugs with a caller, I will complete the quest to harvest 5 mule deer bugs with a fitness score below 40%. That should bring enough credits to buy a license for another territory. They are quite expensive and it will take a while to unlock all the areas. I also heard about unlocking new areas by doing quests. If that's true, I haven't found them yet, but I'll check that before spending 4500 credits on a license. For now that's all about my progress and future plans. Overall I can say that I like the game so far even if the beginning was quite slow. I hope that over time progress will get a bit faster when I unlock some of the perks. So we are done with Way of the Hunter for today. Let's switch to Huntsman 2 now. Recently I tried to find an upgrade for the legendary bison. At best I drove you over 700 kilos. Unfortunately I found mostly normal ones and only a few quite small legendaries. At least Bison bring some cash when you sell them and so I've reached 2.5 million credits and got a bit closer to the next big goal of 3 million. But today I want to talk about some achievements in Huntsman 2. I checked the statistics on Steam and noticed that many of them still have a very low unlock rate. The difficulty is probably not the reason, but they require patience and grind and some of them are honestly quite pointless. I'm not a console guy at all, so leave me a comment below if you know something about the stats on Xbox, Playstation and Nintendo Switch. In the last video about hunting ducks and geese I already talked about one of them, the hunter. 
It's pretty simple, claim one of every animal and you're done. It's easy and you unlock a weapon. The next is one of everything. You need to buy every piece of equipment at least once. Every weapon and caliber, all scopes, every piece of clothing, callers and all the additional tools like sand blocker and wind powder with all the charges. When I did it back then I was confused why the achievement wasn't unlocked. The reason was that also dogs count as equipment and I had only one of the retrievers at this point. So it's relatively easy again, grind for enough credits, buy everything and that's it. Let's talk about Christopher Columbus now. You need to find all points of interest on every map. Most of them you will find while playing, but some towers and blinds are hidden quite well. I'll show you all the maps of each region so you can check which points you are missing. Another one that isn't difficult at all. For the dog whisperer it takes time, a lot of time. You need to train every stat of the 5 dogs to the max. The best way is to take one of the dogs with you on every hunt and use him actively. Over time the meters fill up, when a dog is fully trained switch to the next one. And again not difficult, just extremely time consuming and pointless because you don't need the same dog in different colors for hunting. The same applies to the Sherlock achievement, you need to analyze a total of 5000 tracks. So collect every track you find on the way if you want the achievement. This one is also pointless because you don't benefit from investigating useless tracks and it won't give you any advantage. The last achievement I want to talk about is Jack of all trades. For this we go to the shooting range because it's about completing all the competitions. Basically there is a regular shooting range with targets at different distances and a skeet range designed for shotgun shooting. At the cabin you can change your loadout, refill ammo and start the competitions. There are three competitions for every weapon type. Classic rifles, modern sporting rifles, bows and crossbows and for the shotguns. For each weapon there are three levels of difficulty which vary in the shooting distance and time limit. The leaderboard has five spots for each difficulty. To complete all competitions for the achievement you need to rank in the top five in every single one of them. Take weapons with a high capacity and focus on the center of the targets for the most points. This one is also not that difficult, just take some practice, especially the skeet range. Overall this part of the game is useless for hunting because there is no option for weapon calibration. It's a sport shooting range and has nothing to do with hunting. I think we now have a video for almost every aspect of Hunt Sim 2. It was a long journey, since September 2020 I've played almost 400 hours and now we have completed everything. But I will not abandon it. The focus will change a bit but I want to show both games on my channel. If there is anything else you want to see about Huntsim 2 then post your ideas in the comments or contact me via Twitter or Instagram. And that's it for today. For questions and feedback leave me a comment below. 
The next video might take a while, depending on my progress in Way of the Hunter and what the Alaska DLC will add to the game. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like and subscribe. Thank you for your patience and your support.